Uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to see the old friends of the BioMPP people here again and uh, say hello to the uh, DBCS old colleagues. Uh, I want to talk about my own project, not for the all of the Japanese projects. So this is just for my own projects only. I am currently tackling on the uh, automatic diagnosis of the mental diseases and uh, some processing the uh, EHR. So I want to talk about these things today. Well, first of all, I'm currently here. Uh, probably you don't know, but uh, here is a so-called Mount Fuji here, and uh, we have the Shizuoka Prefecture. And almost all the people is just passing this prefecture to go into Nagoya or Osaka without dropping off. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have any interest in our city, there's nothing there, but you can drop off in Mumbai city, Hamamatsu here. It's a westmost town of this prefecture, so it's near to Nagoya, one hour and a half from here. But anyway, this is that. So this is through interaction. I'm Yoshinobu Kano, and I'm uh, formerly from the Tsuji lab of the University of Tokyo before. And uh, after doing the JST Presto Sakiga K1, and uh, DBCS, and I'm currently in the Associate Professor of the Shizuoka University. And I want to talk uh, about the medical things today only, but uh, my own interest is for the NLP in general. So I'm uh, doing research of the spoken language and written languages, and I want to create some human-like NLP system uh, as a goal, but uh, for the medical things, it's more application. So it's not really for the uh, psychological things today. And uh, this is a kind of ongoing my own projects list of the things. Actually, so many projects going on. I can talk about these red ones only today, but I'm tackling the legal NLP to solve the legal by examination in Japan uh, to make the automatic court judgment system. Or uh, I'm doing some uh, uh, automatic generation sentences to play the um, wow game. It's uh, called Mafia. Or uh, catch copy generations for the uh, advertisement copies or new headline generations and so on. And I'm to talk about these one today. Uh, before doing that, uh, this is another small uh, one uh, before going. Probably some of you may have interest in. I'm trying to create a text mining system for the neuroscience papers. If you see the neuroscience papers, they describe about there is some function in the brain and the coordinate is something. So we want to extract coordinate function and some experimental condition mapping. Then we can make some inference of the possible network in the brain. And I want to compare with so called, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, to, uh, some large network in the US, uh, they are uh, trying to extract all of the human brain, cutting off automatically, and make that physical neural network. And if you can uh, compare with the paper mining result with uh, such uh, actual result, then we can find some uh, in uh, inference of the possible network. That's one of the goals of this project. And uh, finally, I can show such things in the service. Probably we can release this system in, the, in this year because this year is the end of the project year. We have to release. It's obligatory. Well, this is a crazy project uh, with the JST funding. And uh, medical documents. If you see the medical documents, I think it's the same in other countries, but the Japanese medical documents are the same in the sense of uh, the broken language. The doctors are very, very busy, so they write some broken languages. And uh, even if they write quite a good language, uh, the contents are not so easy to interpret. Because there are some expressions, like in this case, oh, oh, what's the name? Uh, this is a symptom for when you are sleeping, you, uh, your breath is stopping. That's a symptom name. And you have to find the symptom name from the expression of the language. It's saying, breathe noise getting worse in the night, breath stops. But it's a one noun, a proper noun. So we have to find what is the correspondence between the expression and nouns. Probably it's uh, quite common for your uh, research as well. But uh, if we can do such sort of thing, then probably we can make some um, extraction of the documents of the electronic health records. One of the projects that I'm involved in is the JPA project. This is a AMED funded project for the uh, uh, psych physiological things. Uh, if you have some cancer, then your cell will be uh, picked by the doctor, then it's sent to the uh, physiological physiological people, then they have some microscope check, then they can find, oh, this is cancer cell, or this is just healthy cell. And they have so many photos with the uh, memo, I mean, textual reports uh, with the photos. So we want to find what is the reference from the text to the photos, uh, because in the photo you have so many tens or hundreds of cells at the same photo image. So we want to find which one is the cancer and which one is the healthy cell. If you interpret the text, we can narrow down which one is which one. So that's the final goal of this project. But before going to do that, we have to de-identify the text. Uh, it's the same in any country, I think. 
uh, we have to de identify the contents to anonymize uh, from the patient's information. Uh, it's not so actually easy to do that because uh, in Japan, uh, they require and the government requires to make the identification before using the data, but there is no definition what is the, the identification in the Japanese government. So we really don't know what to do. <laughs> and uh, the final thing happens is uh, each hospital decides their own criteria. Yeah. So sometimes, oh, it's a proper noun, or sometimes, oh, because it's an age, uh, it should be hidden, or sometimes it's sex, or sometimes it's a history of the, uh, the disease itself. So first, we have to define what is the identification. But uh, at least we have to hide uh, person names, or ages, or hospital names. So that's the bottom line. So we are trying to do this by uh, human annotation, and trying to learn from the human annotation. And then one of the projects is uh, uh, summary generation. Because in Japan, uh, the doctor is uh, required to make summary when the patient retired, I mean, the exits the hospital, or the, doc the patient died. So they have to summarize the past history of the records. But it's just cumbersome for them because it's just summarization. So they asked me to create automatic summarization system to help doctors. But actually, we tried this one, but uh, we found that the summary is not really summary in this case. Uh, patients sometimes write down something new finding in the summary. Like uh, when we um, think about the past medication, probably we have to do that rather than the actual care. In that case, it's not really summary, but it's finding. So we cannot make extractive summary from the EHRs in this case. It's actually another very difficult problem. And another same problem is here because we don't know what is a good summary. Actually, doctors don't know. So we have to discuss with the doctors to define what is the gold standard summary, uh, but it's still very difficult for them. But we are still doing that, to, uh, trying to do this. And we collaborate with the NHO hospital, it's a national hospital organization in Japan, and they have five, no, 50 hospitals in Japan. And they are uh, already collecting a huge amount of the EHRs from all of these 50 hospitals in the same format. And we, they already are um, storing, I think, a couple of millions of the records. So we can use these records to find something. And we are currently trying to find side effects of the cancer medicines. Because if you have some cancer, then sometimes you have to select uh, to do Medicare by the chemicals. In that case, side effect is a large problem because this cancer medicine side effect is quite strong sometimes. So we want to find which person could have strong side effect uh, by uh, finding the past history. Uh, this sort of person and patient could have some large side effect for this medicine. Uh, that's possible. But in that case, we need NLP because side effects is not written as a numerical value, but it's written in the free text part. So we have to find this patient had some side effect in this day, and with the numerical values of the medicine, we can find, oh, this is a, a medicine here, then they have some side effect, then uh, the personalization of this patient is something, and fine, new patients could be uh, bad for some specific medicine. So that's one of the projects I'm going on. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going from one to one, it's again another one. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, main topics today. I want to talk about the mental disease diagnosis uh, from the conversation I and mean, spoken language. This is one of the JST Chris project. It's a large grant funded one. Uh, and uh, we are collaborating with the KO University Hospital. Uh, they are the mental disease people. And uh, they are recording uh, many <coughs> patients' conversation and send us as a records. And then we transcribe everything into text and make annotations. Then using this data, we trying to infer which person could be like depression or Alzheimer's disease or uh, some anxiety. And currently we records, oh, it's uh, too old, but uh, currently we have 300 hours of records already. I think it's one of the largest uh, spoken language corpus in the world. And we are annotating, I mean, transcribing all of these records. And part of the uh, records are annotated uh, by some uh, special annotations. I will show you later. And, okay, the problem is, uh, if I uh, make a submission of such paper, we normally ask these things. Will you make your corpus public available? It's a large problem in the medical processing. In Japan, it's never happened. Uh, because hospital doesn't allow us to make anything public. Uh, actually, they are very strict on the publication. 
So we have to uh, say uh, this is not really reproducible, but uh, it's because of the personalization information, uh, personal information problem. Uh, however, uh, it's uh, I think same in the all over the world, right? Uh, I think most of the countries are quite strict on public, uh, publishing the uh, records of the patients. So uh, it's not really possible that we are storing the data. So we can use the large corpus if you are the collaborative researchers. Right. And another problem, uh, another question frequently asked is, is it large corpus uh, from the NLP point of view? It's uh, already 20, no, 300 hours. I think it's a quite large as a spoken language. But if you transcribe into text, the size is not so large. Uh, I will show you. Uh, that's uh, one of the, another project, the problem in this project. And, uh, but when we can do this uh, automatic diagnosis of the mental disease, I think it's very useful because uh, when the doctors make the diagnosis, it's very really costful because they have large, uh, higher salary. But uh, if we can do automatic, it's quite good. Uh, and another problem is it said that one, one in four people in the world has uh, some mental disease. That means probably here, uh, I think 20 or 30, uh, 10 or more people should have mental disease or related yes. things. Yeah. That's statistics, right? Uh, so uh, if it's uh, really possible, then it's very useful for all of the people. Right? And if you can find some disease before you are getting real disease, it's much better. So that's one of the aim of our project. And the uh, corpus is called underpin. I don't remember some abbreviation, but it's uh, called underpin. And uh, well, if you are Japanese, you can read the letters, but I will show you in English. This is uh, Keio University Hospital. It doesn't make anything but the, the hospital building. And inside the building, they are recording all of the uh, conversation between the patients. Patients are sometimes not really patients. It's healthy or some disease. And the psychologist, this woman, is asking something within this interview. And the interview is, is consists of three parts. The first part is question answering. So she is asking some list of the question, like how do you feel today, or what is your family, that sort of one. It's around 30 minutes for the question answering. Uh, he is a doctor of the mental disease in KOS hospital. The point is, uh, it's the only disease we can use NLP in the entire uh, symptoms because uh, mental diseases are diagnosed by the doctors using the word conversation only. So it's really NLP problem. So it's really some conversation. Then, of course, it's records of the voices. So we are transcribing all of the things into text and uh, then make some machine learning to infer what is a uh, disease or it's uh, healthy. Uh, this is our campus and this is my lab. And I'm asking my students to transcribe all of the records. <laughs> of course, <laughs> I'm paying the money. <laughs> this is because the data is personal information. We can send it to the Google Cloud, right? So we have to do it in house. Oh, the other things are just Japanese, so I'm skip. So this is what happening in the backside. So after these things, we now have 300 hours of records and all of the Japanese trans transcription there. And we have oh, annotations like uh, this. Uh, this is a conversation annotation, one of the uh, famous Japanese annotation style. It's really quite uh, precise. We are doing some annotation like here the stretching of the voice, or here is pause of the voice, or this is a tone raising, or here is filler, or here is some special expression, or the saying is just stopping uh, inside the word. Or sometimes some subjects are laughing but speaking something. So in some annotation, he is laughing and speaking something. Or some people are sometimes singing and speaking. <laughs> then it's uh, also skin. Yeah. So this sort of transcription there. And uh, using such uh, annotation, we now have this sort of data. Well, it's a bit old, but it's a more, one, oh, 50 percent more now. And we have healthy people, depression, bipolar disorder, and the size of failure, and anxiety, and dementia. So we have five large uh, diseases, and healthy people. And we can do uh, one versus rest and learning by SBM to infer what, what, what is the disease of the specific subject. And if you are NLP side of people, you can easily find how small these subjects are. It's too small to make some machine learning. That's a large problem. Um, oh, and uh, 
interview is uh, consists of three parts. The first part is, as I said, is question answer and free talk. The second part is storytelling. You are asked to tell Cinderella freely, just Cinderella. Then some patient starts talking about quite a sad Cinderella story, or uh, some patients may have a depressive Cinderella story, uh, so, or some patients are very happy Cinderella, or sometimes not Cinderella. That happens depending on the person. And the third part is picture explanation. I, sh I show some picture to explain what is the situation. And the picture consists three persons, and uh, they may have some specific relationship between, like uh, one, they are friends or they are not friends, or they are talking something. And they have to infer such things by using the cognitive function of the brain. So if you have some problem with the cognitive function, then it's very difficult to explain such pictures. So we are asking these things. And totally we have one hour for one visit. And uh, we are asking the same patient to come second time or uh, in the maximum five times to trace uh, what uh, changes between the time. And uh, these are the features we have extracted from the corpus. Uh, because of the number of the subjects is very small, uh, we are doing quite classic things. So we uh, parse the sentence uh, by the parser and find what is a part of speech and what is uh, um, some specific case laws. Uh, because in the case of Japanese, the case laws are um, explicitly marked by the Joshi particles. So we can find what is the case laws, how many times they said what sort of case law. And it's very um, related to the cognitive function of the patients because uh, using subjects are easier, but using objects are a bit more difficult. So we can find how many objects can be used by some specific disease people. Or uh, the response time, or formats, or fillers, or these are audio, um, not linguistic features. And using, uh, here is some finding from the analysis. And if we see the contents, we found longer sentences are difficult by the uh, disease patients. It's probably, of course, because the longer sentences may have complex sentences, like a less conjunction or a variety of number of vocabularies. And depression people, it's very famous in this field, but uh, they tend to insist himself. And so they use many subjective case mark I mean, They are using fast pronoun normally, uh, frequently, so we can find uh, the depression people by just counting how many subjective case markers there. And another thing is dementia. Dementia decreases all of the ability of the human intellectual things. So in this case, they tend to make more mistakes or uh, using many directional words. Uh, directional words are used for the fillers in Japanese. So like ano wa kono is too many times. Uh, that or this. Or a few contents words because uh, they probably forget the words to say and uh, they use more smaller vocabulary. Uh, and uh, it's uh, quite a contrast to the healthy people. And another thing is uh, uh, it's very higher um, correlation between these dementia people, but the higher average acoustic volume is there. It's just because probably their ear is bad and they speak larger volume speech. But it's very large relationship here. And the schizophrenia, uh, probably you know, it's a um, sort of a complex disease. You may have some, uh, how do you say, uh, some not real virtual things inside your brain, right? So we have to find whether they are uh, saying something with evidences or not. It's very difficult to extract. But probably some sort of relationships are there by finding how many case markers of, is, of ni is there. Ni is a, a tool marker, so it's a by something. So if you find how many by something marker is there, and if it's less, then probably they are this sort of disease. We find such sort of relationships. It's not so good uh, correlation, but uh, some of the correlations are found here. Uh, so this is a summary for this project. Uh, we are currently still increasing the, the number of the records. So it's going to finally 500 hours. I think it's the large, world largest corpus in the uh, spoken language and this disease people. And probably we can make 80 plus percent of the accuracy and finally, the problem is whether this is really useful or not. I think it's useful for the doctors, but uh, we want to make use of this one for the general, general people. So if you don't say it's medical, but it's for healthy, then uh, we can make use of this system to the healthcare domain to automatically, like a web service, you can upload your voice. And uh, we can say, oh, you can be disease, some sort of depression. 
And we are also trying to do written language disease findings here uh, by using Twitter um, talks. Uh, and because uh, our goal is to make the pre-disease things to find. So before going to real disease, we want to find uh, you can be some disease uh, in some years. Uh, that's one of our goals. So then the world can be, uh, I mean, our government can save the money to make the Medicare uh, in efficiently. And uh, we, this is spin off of the same project. We apply the same thing to the ASD, uh, Autism Spectrum Disorder. Probably you know, if you are Japanese people, it's called one of the Hattatsu Shogai, a de developmental disorder. And this is actually not really a disease, it's a, just a personal um, characteristic. So <coughs> we cannot um, <coughs> change the personality, uh, but we can train the people to adapt to the social relationship. And here is a famous ADOS test. This is the most famous ASD criteria by humans. So if you can be entitled to uh, ADOS expert by some uh, examination, then you can make some examination on the patients by one hour or something to ask, like, uh, uh, please assemble some puzzle, or let us talk something, or please explain some picture. And uh, they can write some rating. And uh, if the rating is more than something, it's a uh, um, diagnosis as ASD. And we have module, I mean, we have records of such uh, examination uh, by the hospital, the uh, uh, Hamamatsu University of Medicine. And they recorded around one hour records per each patient. And the totally 40 or around patients are recorded. So we use the same system to uh, apply the similar thing to the ASD. Uh, this is the statistics. So uh, we have uh, 32 subjects and uh, 25 men and five, seven women. And totally 500 meetings. And the ages are quite ranging from the younger to the elder. And uh, they use the similar annotation features. And again, I ask the students to write down all the transcription and uh, make annotation by hand. And here is the uh, ADOS scores. Uh, the human experts of ADOS make scores on different criteria. Like here is a large category, communication, and under communication category, they have one, two, three, four, four different items. Now, this is like a stereotyped use of the words. Now, here is a conversation, how normal the conversation is. And here is DGS or AGES. And some items are from the, I mean, the images or videos, because like gestures are fine, or they make some emotional gestures. So in this case, we cannot directly infer such thing by NLP only. But some relationships and correlations are there. So we can infer all of these scores by NLP, and we try. And again, use the same picture. And here's the result. Uh, it's a bit uh, difficult to read, but uh, because the humans should answer very correct rate with the gold standard as an expert, uh, like if the actual gold standard is, is 0 to 5, then they have to find, OK, this is 0 to 5. And if this is an acceptable error by human experts, and if it's smaller than this one, then we can say the system is uh, almost similar to the experts. And uh, it's for many items almost similar with the experts. So we can say that our system is uh, already uh, with the experts level to infer the ADOS scores. Uh, we found some remarkable features. One more thing is the demonstrated vocabulary. They use demonstrated so many times, uh, probably because uh, I'm not sure if the ASC people may want to point something frequently. And uh, this is also an, an interesting thing. The people have, ASC people have less laughing, uh, probably because of the lack of the sociality. Uh, they cannot make the empathy to the other people, and they cannot laugh at the, the correct timing. It's very difficult for them. And of course, they have non-clear words. And I think it's not specific to Japanese speakers, so if you can record your language and send me, then you can try this one. Uh, if you transcribe and uh, make annotation by yourself. <laughs> so, well, this is a conclusion of this part. Well, we tried this one, and I think it's better than the mental disease ones, probably because we have more precise data of the human experts, and because it's uh, 30 patients for the same ASD patient. Uh, that's the reason why we are doing the better one than the mental disease in general. So uh, probably because I skipped so many things, uh, it's all the things today. But uh, if you want to ask something in detail, I have so many slides. So please ask me. Thank you.